Good evening and welcome to The Angry Astronaut. As of maybe half an hour ago, I just uh, noticed that the FAA license had indeed been issued. There is already a swarm of activity surrounding this naturally. A very exciting moment for everyone. And a lot of stuff, obviously, that's going to be coming up soon. Although, technically, I think it, it's seems that SpaceX is going to have a pretty easy time uh, getting ready for this. They've done a lot of the prep work at this point. They just need to stack the ship, do a few checks, and launch. Um, everything else seems to be very straightforward at this point, at least according to the way SpaceX generally does things. Given the amount of time that S-24 has been sitting around um, in the rocket garden and such, it might have seemed prudent to have done more one more static fire with the ship or something like that prior to this momentous occasion. But it seems that SpaceX really just wants to take their best shot at using B-7 and S-24, regardless of what these vehicles have been through, and try to at least get to space with them. And that is very characteristic of how SpaceX tends to handle these things. And it may very well be that we are going to see a launch either Monday or Tuesday next week. And damn it, they didn't even ask me. Now, in all seriousness, I kind of mean what I just said. And I think we should ask ourselves, I think it's important to ask the question, why is SpaceX doing things this way? Because this is all by design. Now, I speculated in a video that I released not that long ago that SpaceX was going to, or rather the FAA, would issue the license at the 11th hour on Friday, giving the Sierra Club or any other organizations that might be opposed to this launch a a minimal amount of time to react, no time whatsoever to track down a judge to issue sort, some sort of injunction before they could push the button Monday morning. Now, in theory, if the Sierra Club really wants to do something about this, they still have enough time to do it. But the current state of affairs seems to suggest to me that the Sierra Club is not going to do anything. They are instead going to wait until after the launch to see if there are any any collateral damage, any sort of damage to the environment, to this protected area that surrounds the launch pad, wait until there are actual tangible consequences to the launch before they file any sort of legal challenges. Depending on how bad things are, it could be a little bit difficult for SpaceX to take off a second time, but none of that really matters. Once they launch this rocket for the first time, it's all downhill from here. We're going to be expecting future launches. Indeed, there has to be future launches of Starship, regardless of what the opposition may be, because of Artemis, if for no other reason. We need Starship in order to carry out Artemis 3. NASA wants it, the government wants it, and so I don't see anything really stopping SpaceX, at least not in the long run, regardless of what environmentalists might decide to do. But still, was this the only reason? Was this even you know a major motivator for SpaceX to delay uh, the, the announcement of the FAA license until the last possible second on Friday and then to schedule a launch on Monday? Or were there other motivations? Well, yeah. I think there were other motivations, and I think the most obvious one is that SpaceX doesn't want a crowd. The FAA may not be all that concerned about getting all of this stuff implemented prior to the first launch, but the Sierra Club could argue that it has to be completed before SpaceX can launch anything from Boca Chica, especially a full stack. And a judge might very well agree with this. So how does SpaceX deal with this problem? By waiting until the last possible moment to receive the FAA launch license. For example, on Friday at 5.15 p.m. when the Sierra Club can't find a judge to issue an injunction against the launch and then press the button first thing Monday morning. 
So I may not have gotten the exact time right, but yeah, it does seem that SpaceX has this in mind. They want to provide as little notice as possible for people to react to. Now, whether those people might be the Sierra Club or just to avoid a crowd being there in general is difficult to tell. In my opinion, it's a bit of both. However, having a large crowd there on the first launch of the most powerful rocket in history is probably not the best idea idea anyway, and I respect SpaceX's decision in this regard, even though this is going to have a big negative impact, not only on my own plans, but also on the plans of a lot of other people associated with spaceflight, and indeed, the surrounding community, especially the business community in South Padre Island and the surrounding region. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, let's consider the launch that just took place at Spaceport Cornwall. Obviously, a much smaller scale thing, but nevertheless, the Spaceport used the opportunity to really develop a good relationship with the general business community of Cornwall, giving lots of food vendors an opportunity to put up tents there, giving other businesses the opportunity to market their products, and also, of course, inviting the media in force. And that included myself, actually. I'm very grateful for all of the inside opportunities that I got, the up close and personal opportunities that I got to see Virgin Orbit in action, regardless of what happened to the company a few months later. That being the case then, it would seem that SpaceX would want to do something similar for the South Padre Island business community, Harlingen, Brownsville, etc., to pack the hotels, to pack the restaurants, to really bring a lot of tourism dollars to the community in association with this launch. SpaceX is doing nothing of the kind. They're providing as little notice as possible, and very few businesses are going to benefit fit in any meaningful way as a result of this launch, simply because people are not going to have the opportunity to scurry down there and see this amazing event in person. This is going to be absolutely nothing like the first launch of SLS, or at least it most probably won't be. There may be hordes of diehard people who will react at the last moment to get to Boca Chica as rapidly as possible, but from what I'm hearing right now, those crowds have yet to materialize and may have a hard time materializing over this weekend. The huge boost to the local businesses in this region is probably not going to materialize at least as far as this launch is concerned. It may be a little different with future launches. Now, to be clear, SpaceX has no obligation whatsoever to do anything like this. The FAA simply provides them with their license, they give a couple of days notice, and off they go. But just because SpaceX doesn't have an obligation doesn't mean that they're completely heedless of the needs of the business community of South Padre Island and Harlingen, that sort of thing. I think that they do care, but I think the safety of the community is more important. It's going to be difficult to maintain security, especially for this first launch if they have a massive crowd trying to press against the exclusion zone. It's also potentially going to be a serious problem if there is a pad RUD or something along those lines. It could be a frightening experience for thousands of uninformed spectators who really don't know what to expect from something like this, and it could create a panic, it could create a stampede. Who knows? SpaceX doesn't want to have to contend with any of that. Best to try to keep the crowd as small as possible prior to the first and very problematic launch of this untried and generally untested rocket. Yes, it's gone through a static fire. Yes, all of these engines have been tested, but never has this propulsion system been fired up to more than 50% percent power, and it's going to be fired to at least 90% power in order to achieve liftoff. Moreover, we still don't have a flame trench for a Starship, and that being the case, a full power takeoff may stir up a lot of debris that could potentially do damage to the engines before the rocket can pull away. If this happens, it's going to be pretty cataclysmic as well. As I say, a pad RUD, an airburst, something like that, is going to be bad enough. 
it would be far worse if SpaceX had to deal with a massive crowd at the same time. So I respect their reasons, but this 11th hour announcement is going to inconvenience a great number of people. It is going to ruffle some feathers, and unfortunately, I'm probably included in that group of people that are going to be impacted. Oh, and remember how I said that, oh, you didn't even ask me about it. Well, I kind of meant it to a degree because I had made arrangements, as many of you know, to attend the Colorado Springs Space Symposium and to cover a very special event that Dynetics is rolling out exclusively. I had an invitation from them to check out the rollout of this brand new tech associated with Artemis for the first time, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be the only YouTuber there doing that because everybody else is going to be at Boca Chica or glued to their TV sets watching what's happening with Starship. And in, as a result, consequently, I may not be there for the launch. I'm scheduled to arrive on Wednesday, and by then, it all may be too late. And for those of you who supported my second trip to Boca, first of all, I apologize sincerely, but at the same time, the support that you gave me will be applied towards my trip to see the second launch. Obviously, Starship needs to fly again. So flying for the first time is going to be only the beginning of this process, obviously. I will be there for the second launch if I cannot make the first, and of course I'll be providing commentary for the first launch, assuming that I'm not at the Dynetics event covering what they're doing. Um, and the reason I've made this decision, Dynetics offered me this opportunity weeks ago. They were kind enough to give me this opportunity to tell me actually what they were going to be rolling out, even though it's a secret. I appreciate appreciate their trust, so I get this exclusive opportunity, whereas SpaceX, I haven't even gotten so much as an interview with one of their employees. I would very much like to do something like that in the future, but when confronted with the decision of having to choose between a company that has offered me all of these opportunities and covering Starship, it was a very difficult decision to make, but I had no choice but to choose Dynetics. This was the best choice, I think, not only for myself, but also for the viewers to bring you information about something aside from Starship, something very important and something that's going to have a big impact on Artemis. I think that it's very newsworthy and something that should be covered, especially given the fact that virtually nobody else is going to be covering it. And that in itself is also a bit of a problem. The Colorado Springs Space Symposium is a huge, huge event for space aficionados nationwide, world wide, really. Those who want to attend, at least the companies who attend, pay a lot of money to get in. We're talking over $3,000 to attend this symposium. And uh, fortunately, I'm getting to go for free once again because of Dynetics. But for those who are attending this symposium, and especially those who are giving lectures, that sort of thing, I foresee a situation, assuming that SpaceX does launch while the symposium is going on, that people are going to be flooding out of the classrooms, flooding out of the lecture halls the moment any news comes out that Starship is about to launch. And we all know how long we have to wait, generally, before these things actually happen. And I think that's going to have a very negative impact on a lot of the presentations going on at the symposium. It's my personal hope that Starship doesn't actually launch until the 20th, as many people were anticipating. But it's very hard to say what's going to happen. And that's going to impact a lot of people, obviously, as I said before, besides just, you know, space aficionados at the symposium or besides people who would have liked a little bit of advance notice so they could have come out to Boca to actually see the launch. But I think what SpaceX is doing is important. I think it's very important that we try to keep the crowds under control for the first launch of the world's most powerful rocket, especially given that it is relatively untried and untested. Yes, it's gone through a static fire at less than 50% power. Once we crank those engines up to 90% or higher to achieve liftoff, nobody really knows exactly what's going to happen. 
happen. And I think it's responsible of SpaceX to try to keep the spectator count down to a minimum while they're playing around with something this powerful and with the potential disaster that could be associated with a pad RUD or an airburst just over the pad. So I agree with their reasoning here, but at the same time, as I said previously, the local community, the local businesses, that sort of thing have missed out on a major opportunity to, to make a whole lot of money if there had been a more formal event surrounding this. So we'll see how the relationship between SpaceX and the local community pans out as a result of this. Nevertheless, I do agree with SpaceX's decisions. So hopefully I'll get there. Hopefully Starship does not take off until later in the week. Of course, that's purely selfish on my part. For everybody else's benefit, I hope it takes off as soon as possible. But until all of this happens, until Starship changes the future of private space flight forever. I urge all of you to stay angry about space.